Well, hello and welcome people to the internet back to some more Halls of Torment. Today, uh, as you can see, I've done a bit of grinding here. <laughs> I've been playing a little bit, trying to make sure that we can get our meta progression built up. We can get some more gear. We also found this little guy over here, the Cupbearer, who basically builds potions. Uh, so for one, this is a way that we can get rerolls into our game, which we didn't have before. And then I'm also looking for all these little plants that are going to unlock other potions. Not sure what all these are yet, but I've only found two plants so far. Uh, uh, we do have a charm that he gave us that allows us to locate and basically they just give us a green highlight nothing really uh extra special there as far as today though we're not playing the archer and we're not even playing the cleric as i thought we were going to be playing i have been playing a lot with the cleric and i like the cleric a lot we're gonna be playing with the shield maiden though the shield maiden is the next overall quest i need to do that's going to unlock a new character and so we're going to be playing with her hopefully getting some big damage here ultimately the goal is to deal 300 000 damage with our shield bash and our shield bash is going to scale damage with our block strength and she is be going to be getting more block strength as she levels up and yeah basically she's also going to be slamming the ground shield maiden uh she likes to block that being said let's take a look at the gear that we're going to be equipping her with because they're going to help us out quite a bit so for one we have plate armor which increase, increases her base block strength we also have the plated boots which increase her base block strength so in, increasing that damage helping us complete that quest a little more as far as gear you know i still don't have all that much like it's basically like do i want the movement speed or do i want the base block obviously with this character we want the block but typically i wear the movement shoes uh, and typically I think I wear these as no I think this is my default and then for hands I have attack speed or pickup range eh, you can go you know you can go with either I think typically I play with attack speed although pickup range is, is really nice because then I don't really I don't really have to worry about it during the run. All right, so let's go ahead and go in. Now you're going to see here, I have completed Haunted Caverns, I have completed Ember Grounds, and uh, I have completed Forgotten Not Viaduct. So we're off to Frozen Depths. Yes, I told you, I've been doing a little bit of grinding. And overall, uh, the difficulty spike, I, I, man, I don't know what happened here with the archer. Maybe it was just the archer character that threw me off. But there there was one enemy that, like, if you stood right on top of you, you basically just, like, die, which is kind of what we found. I, I don't know. I think I just had a really bad build because this has been much easier, much much easier as well as well as the forgotten viaduct i just like smoked it first time anyway we're not here to brag frozen depths here we go never played this map before so not exactly sure what we're gonna find if there's gonna be any like this i have no idea what this is but yeah let's go ahead off i guess let's just head off in that direction first uh, I do have a ring on as well that gives me these two uh, skeleton summons. Skeleton summons or imp summons? Something. It's some kind. It's some kind of summon. Uh, just to help me out with damage a little bit. They don't do all that much damage, but you know, they whatever helps. Whatever helps. All right. Now collect the cracked ember eye. Oh, that's for not for this. That's not for this map. That's for. Um, that's for what ember ember the ember grounds uh as far as damage show, let's go ahead and go for area since both our main attacks here are area based and then what do we have down here it looks maybe like a skeleton or maybe oh you got a little ice beam there going on oh we gotta awaken you marcus the scripter use fire ah well i don't have a fire ability yet but we might be able to pick one up here so let's go for base defense I don't need. Let's go for attack speed. If block strength comes up, then there's a good chance that I'll take that. But base defense we don't need, especially when we're going to be stacking block strength. I don't think. Well, that's a wall. We're not going to walk into that. There's that base block strength. Yeah, I think I'll take it over range. Let's go ahead and take that. We're going to build kind of a tanky character here. Crypt bonus. Uh, here I think I am going to go... Am I going to go with range? Yeah, let's go with range over movement speed. I'm assuming that's going to help our uh, our shield. Oh, man. Okay, we might need some move speed here. <laughs> we might need some move speed. We are, we are a little slow. Hey, I didn't... I didn't say, hey, Google. My phone just activated. Um, They're always listening. Let's go for that move. Oh, uh, we can go for crit chance. I like crit chance. Let's grab crit chance. Is it? Oh, that is a wall. Okay, I want to make sure. I want to make sure we figured it out. That is, in fact, it is in fact a wall. Okay, yeah, we need some movement speed. We are slow here. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll take the weapon for proficiency in the shield. What's the other one? Oh, just crit bonus on the main weapon. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna take the base block strength for sure. Especially if we're gonna be grouped up on enemies like that. Holy moly, we are slow. Come on. We we did our cardio. We had our weedies. We might have armor on, but we should be able to run. There. Rather than the, I'm going to take a little bit more movement speed. 
We get we gotta get a little bit of speed on these boys. Now here's hope it'll say attack speed damage. Yeah, I mean that's just clearly the best one here. Um, hopefully we can find, I do only have one, uh, fire ability, so likely gonna, I mean, I'm gonna save my reroll for this. Hopefully we can find that, pop this guy out of the ice and see what he gives me. Hopefully, you know, he doesn't start attacking me. Hopefully he's not, uh, oh shoot, what's his name? I was gonna make the reference. Prince, uh, Prince, what's his face? Prince, what's his face? The, the, the Githy Yankee from, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. You know, we free him and then he just decides to attack us. It's like, what the, what the heck, man? I'm rescuing you. That was going to bug me. I'm not going to ever... <laughs> There's no way I'm pulling that name out of my butt, though. Um, Let's see. Let's grab the... Yeah, let's just keep going block strength. Might as well. Oh, my Jesus. Um, Okay. These guys are fat. Oh boy, these guys are mighty fast. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't move away. I can't move away. Block strength and move speed. Okay, we might need to rethink this build. Uh, I mean, I I just can't. I can't get away. They're yeah. They're they're way too fast. They're way too fast. I need I need more power. Uh, dragon's breath. That's an ability I didn't have before. Okay. First things first. I need you to actually hit them. Well, this is this is interesting. This is very interesting. I, w I was not expecting this. Let's go for damage. Uh, I was not expecting these clowns to be this fast, but here we are. I cannot get away. I think this is too little too late, though. Yeah, I I mean I the, once once they're on me I can't, I can't get away so I I need some more maybe I just need more move speed. Um, that being the case, yeah, we might have to we might have to postpone this map until well because I because I could because basically yeah I I just I'm not fast enough so it's possible that I, what I should probably be doing here so we're gonna we're gonna go to the bridge instead we're gonna do that. Because I can just go, because we have, moving speed is a meta progression option, right? I'm not crazy. Yeah, moving speed. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to have to grind a little bit, get that up. Uh, likely, if we had a faster character, like what is, what is our move speed, comparatively speaking? 4.5 meters a second. We have 5.5, 4.5, 5, 5, 5. Yeah, these guys are all faster than me. I've got one of the slowest characters, the cleric being the other one. So, and it looks like they're going literally our speed. So let's go to the Forgotten Viaduct. We can definitely do this one, though. And we get our starting ability, which is very nice. So we are going to be taking... What do we want here? We could go... Since we're slow, maybe it's best to go Radiant Aura. Although, we could just go Transfiction. Transfiction is really good. Just uh, increases the damage taken from attacks. That seems to be that seems to make the most sense. Yeah, let's do that. That seems to make the most sense. Just increase damage. What we're going for is increase is increasing the damage for our let's just go flat damage. For our shield bash. So that's gonna make sense. Get that fragile applied. What area? Yeah, let's go area. So I'm hoping this is a little more straightforward here. What does Force do for our character here? Force does co uh, knockback. Okay, so I'm not super concerned about that. So let's go with range. Yeah, and what I need, I need more enemies. What is this doing? Temporarily uh, attack speed bonus thanks to Berserker's Rage. Okay. I thought it was setting me on fire. Base block strength, base move speed. Let's get some move speed. We're pretty good on, on defense, I think. I still haven't... 
I, blocks, block is still one of those that I, I like figuring out exactly how how it works for some reason. Like let, let's block strength right here. So 100% chance. Oh, I I I'm gonna be honest. I for some reason have never seen this before. So 100% block chance for 10 or less damage. 40 damage is 50% chance to block, and 100 damage is 20% chance to block. Okay, that made it way more easy. For some reason, I remember when I read it before. It just gave me like, the, oh, you know what I bet it was? I bet I saw a block and I read it here and it was a little bit more like not contextual to the actual stats. It was a little bit more generic and I didn't, I never thought to check the, the actual character stats. So that's super nice. Let's go ahead and I'm not passing up the attack speed and damage. That would just be silly. But yeah, see, seeing those numbers, it's a, a much more straightforward of understanding exactly what's going on with that stat. Block strength, movement speed, that's basically exactly what we want. Although block strength and damage is also pretty good, but I'm just going to take the 5% move speed. Here I will, here I'm going to take the area, I think, or range. No, let's take range because we have transfiction. That's a better option. All right, what's in the box? What's in the box? Nothing. A single coin. That was not worth it. It's not worth Uh, 20% effect on hit chance. It's pretty good. Although I think I'm just going to take block strength and damage. Block strength, block strength or move speed? Let's take the block strength, I think. I don't need the force. Metabolism, eh, eh, you know. It is what it is. You don't get hit, you don't need it. That being said, it's a lot easier to not get hit when enemies are not faster than you. <laughs> when they're slower, it's a lot easier. Um, I like attack speed here. Let's take that. I would definitely take the the transfiction upgrade at some point. I just got to find something else that I don't really want. Uh, like this. <laughs> like that's a perfect opportunity for it. That's exactly what I was looking for. Oh, you know what I, I want to check? Does, uh, let's see, so shield. So 30,000 damage, so we're, okay, so we're right on track to doing that. Okay, I was wondering if this was going to show me the, like, calculation for how much damage we're doing. Maybe it's here. Ah, shield bash. Damage per block? No. Damage modifier? Is this what I want? So it's doing 191 damage per hit? I think that's what it's implying. This is what I would assume, right? If we look at Warhammer here, damage, yeah, okay. But where is the base damage per block? Well, this is base damage per, oh, base damage per block, so per point of block, right? And our block strength is 58, so that's 116. Does that make sense? Look at that. Just so I'm such a genius. I'm so smart. I put that all together. I put that together all by myself. Aren't you guys so proud of me? Crypt bonus, let's go. The sad part about that is it probably said literally that on the character selection screen. I just didn't put that together or remembered it. But hey. Who's counting? Pick up range area. Now let's grab area. It'll help our shield bash out a little bit. Make that cone nice and big. Our cone is going to slowly turn into a circle. Bro, how much health do you have, though? All right, let's get the skill. Oh, man, that's going to pop in elite. Yep, yeah, this is the one that I was talking about on the um, the second map. That, like, as soon... Yeah, as, he's so fast. As soon as he gets on you, man, he just, like, 
There we go. Let's push him back. I'm going to need some movement speed now. As soon as he gets on you, like, you, you can't push him away. It's almost like I need knockback or something. Yeah, give me this. What do I want here? Oh, and I can't re-roll this. Oh, okay. I think I said I was going to save my re-roll for this in the previous, uh, previous map, but obviously I can't do that. So that being the case, let's go ahead and take the, the flame strike. I just need something strong. And this says strong. So I think that makes the most sense. Burn damage, burn chance, crit bonus, attack speed damage. Um, ma, 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 ma. Let's go for a proficient stance. And let's hopefully take out this elite so that way I don't have to take out two at a time. Especially this one that's a little speedy. Yeah, you, you stay over there. Stay stay away for now. We'll, we'll take you out eventually. Defense regeneration. Yeah, let's get a little bit of that. Oh, yep. Got to be careful. Don't want you getting too close now. Pick this up. Phantom Needles? Phantom Needles seems like a solid pickup over the other two. Oh, heck no. Oh, heck no. You stay away. You stay over there. Nope, he's charging at me. Don't like that. Give me the base damage. Let's kill this guy. Let's take him out. Put him down. Needles, go after him. Ah, that. There you go. There you go. Nice pushback. Attack speed. Let's go. Get in there. Pop him. That was my fault. I walked literally right in front of him. I was just taunting him, though. Attack speed, damage, crit bonus. Let's go. Yeah, let's get base block strength. Are the arrows signifying what my, like, base attack it scales off of? I still haven't figured that out. I'm sure, it's, to be fair, I'm, like, you know, two videos behind what you guys are watching. So, uh, so it's it's possible that you guys already told me what it is, and I just haven't seen it yet. Attack speed, damage, crit chance, crit bonus, crit... Ooh, 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 ooh. What do we want here? What do we want here? We want that. Although our primary goal is to actually get shield bash damage, so I probably should have taken the attack speed. Who knows what's correct. Area, nope, weapon proficiency, let's go. Let's go, give it to me. All right, what else do we want? We want... Keep going, area. Man, guys, today today was a good day of recording. You know, I it, it's a it's a Saturday Saturday evening, in fact. Now I don't know when you know exactly in the schedule this is gonna come out compared to a lot of the other videos that are coming about, but there's a lot of fun ones that are coming out. I had a good good time today. You know, sometimes there there are days when you're recording when you have a channel like mine where you're you're doing a you do a bunch of first impression stuff that. You know, sometimes you get some videos that are, or you get some games that, uh, you know, you don't exactly respond to. And that's, you know, that's the nature of doing a channel where we do a lot of first impressions, right? There are some games that are going to hit. There are some games that are going to miss. And, uh, unfortunately, there are, there are some days where you have some misses. Today was not one of those days. We have a lot of bangers coming up on the channel that I'm very excited about. And... Overall, you know, I had a good time playing, and that's that's really the name of the game here. You get a game that, you know, is worth it, count me in. Oh, oh, okay, okay. See, I dodged that flawlessly. Uh, yikes. That's a big yikes. Block strength, movement speed, love it. Okay, this elite is being a real pain, man. I can't hit him. He's too far away. He's too fast.
Okay, is there any food in here? Because I would love a decent meal. Base defense, grip bonus force. Let's, you know what? I, I joked about it before. Let's get a little bit of force. We need a little bit of pushback, maybe. Although that's not pushing basically anything back. That's pushing paper clips. I need to push men. Okay, dude, you got you gotta stop riding on your horse. I got just my feet here. Crit bonus, attack speed. Yeah, let's go attack speed on these things. Uh, I got just my feet. Like I can't catch you while you're on a horse. I need you to slow your roll. I need you to take a seat. Okay, there we go. We're gonna get in front of you. Okay, okay, we did some decent damage there. Okay, my needles are poking his horse in the butt. We're okay. We're doing okay. We just gotta apply that fragility and then increase the damage. Then, then my needles will do real good damage. Ow! Don't well, don't run into me, you prick. Yeah, let's get uh, let's let's get this effect on hit chance up. There we go. We applied the fragility. Oh no 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 no! Okay, needles, do your work. Stab him in the butt. Oh, our burn's hitting him too. Oh, I probably shouldn't even when he's coming near me. I probably shouldn't walk. That increases our our crit chance, right? Oh, I should definitely be heading the other way, actually. Oh my god, look at that. That was crazy damage. Yeah, I, I got another I got another slip of paper up here that I gotta go pick up. Come over here. Get stabbed in the butt. There we go. Go down, you loony tune. Ooh, what is this? On hit with main weapon. Burn, spark, and frost gain 2% chance of applying their own stack again. Hitting burning enemies with physical attacks has a 10% chance of shooting damaging sparks. Or every one second spreads a random debuff in a 3 meter range. Uh, These are all new. I don't know which one's the best. I think I'm just going to take the broker's cape maybe. That seems like maybe the best one. What is this? Force range. You know what? Do I want to get a little bit of regen? Do I want to start working on this a little bit? I think maybe I do. I don't know. I don't know how good regen is. I ended up... so I Because I had to build up to Metabolism 5 for the Cleric. And it was kind of it was kind of fine. I feel like just getting the damage on Flame Strike would be better. Because this seems real slow. I think I'm going to take it now regardless. So that way you guys can yell at me and say that's that's a bad decision. Oh man, we got a demon baby too. Good god, we got all kinds of trouble. It's okay, our flame strike will do work. Look at those big crits. We love big numbers. Oh my god, just get absolutely wrecked. Oh, fires projectiles. Uh, get a chance to apply affliction. All trans. Uh, blah, 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 blah. They all get a chance to apply affliction. Oh yeah, 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 that's way better, right? That's the damage over time. Oh wait, no. This increases the damage taken from damage over time. Right, because I like fragile. I don't really care about either of these, to be completely honest. But I also, I guess, I guess I can take the clay golem. All right, buddy, come in with us. Help us do some damage. I don't know. The other the other two evolutions weren't really speaking to me. Base move seed crit chance or just base block strength. Where are we at with that anyway? Where are we at with that? We're doing pretty good damage. Where's our shield? Shield shield. Boom. Okay, so we're halfway there. Yeah, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. That being said, what is our actual Block, block, block up here at the top. Block strength. We're at 88. So 100% chance to block 22 or less damage. Yeah, we can just keep that. Keep that going up. Let's just block everything. Block the world. Ooh, nice. Little potion there to top us off. Now I no longer need dinner. What is that, though? Oh, what is that? Is that the Berserker? Yeah, it's the Berserker Rage. Sweet. Let's get her done. Yeah, let's keep this going for a little bit. Oh my god, look how far. I walked a mile. And now I'm going to have to walk 
500 more to get there. Ow, you prick. Crit bonus. What's the other one? Base block strength. Yeah, okay. So I want to wait for proficiency shield. Let's take the... If, if this was more of an AoE ability, I might take Fire Affinity, but it's only targeting one, and it's hitting pretty hard, so I don't think that that's really relevant. I think I'm just going to take the attack speed. We also just haven't seen a magnet yet. Oh, we got an elite boy on us. There's an elite boy. All right, we're just going to flame strike you to death. Okay, we don't want that one. Crit chance bonus, four space health. Honestly, I might just re-roll us. I don't know how... Yeah, I think I would rather have the multi-strike. No? Hey. It's like the game heard me. All right, flame strike his butt. Flame strike his butt. Do it, you coward. You won't. That's right. Get out of here. Okay, so Frost Avalanche. Uh, oh, no. I was going to say, I need to, I need it for a quest, but it's not on this map. So I don't think it's relevant here. So I should probably just take the orbs. I don't know if I have any quests around the orbs. But I don't use them that often. I use Frost Avalanche a little bit more now. So I guess I'll take these... Probably actually makes sense with my slightly slower move speed. There's the shield. I'll take that. Just because then there's like an in, there's an increased probability that the orbs will hit the same enemies multiple times. Or will hit at just generally enemies more times. Right? If you're moving faster, there's a higher chance that they're just going to pass enemies by. Okay. Do you want to increase your roll duration or just give you a t or just increase attack? Or we could just do fragile chance. I think we're going to take the fragile chance infliction chance. I think especially for elites and bosses, I just want to make sure that we're always playing fragile. Just get that damage bonus. Oh, I gotta tell you guys, I gotta tell you, tomorrow morning, not looking forward to it. I gotta work a, well, it's a, a state marathon, I was gonna say. It's the marathon, it's not the Boston Marathon, but it is a state marathon that I have to do some coverage on, do some camera work. And we got, these runners, man, they get up mighty early. I don't know what their deal is, probably wanna do it before the sun comes up. I get it, but at the same time, it's like a guy's gotta sleep. And you want me to get up at, like, 4 in the morning. That's mighty, mighty not cool, because then I can't sleep in on a Sunday. And it makes me grumpy boy. I do get overtime pay, though, so that that is kind of nice. That that makes it a little bit more worth it. And there's a little, there's a cute little, like, um, cute little, like, coffee truck that comes and makes you some, like, hot chocolate. Now... This one probably isn't going to be cold enough for it really to be necessary for that. Sometimes the, the marathon's a little bit later in the year. And it can be a little brisk in the morning. And having a nice coffee or a hot chocolate is, is, is quite comforting. Let's get the damage on these orbs. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of, a lot of the, the work I do on this day is kind of just sitting around. Because obviously it's a marathon and I can't really... I'm not going to run with my camera and follow people, right? So 
it's like I get there, I do the the beginning portion where they're all kind of like warming up and getting ready for it, filming all that. And then the the race starts, they take off. You know, I get the takeoff and then I got to wait like, you know, an hour and a half, closer to 2 hours really for them to finish the race and come back. <laughs> so there's a lot of downtime. There's a lot of downtime where I'm just kind of like sitting waiting. Where I could be sleeping in my nice warm bed. But instead, no, I gotta, <laughs> gotta do my job. God dang it. Uh, let's go for crit bonus. Is kind of nice, is it not? This thing hits like a truck already. Yeah, it's like, how dare you complain for doing your job and getting paid for it? I know the gall on me. No, it'll be fine. It's one. Of, it's one of those things like. It's almost like, uh, it's like anything you like. If, if you don't like going to the doctor, you don't like going to the dentist, you know. I don't know why I picked two medical things, but I know that's those are like fears that people have. It's it's dreading the leading up to it as opposed to the, the thing itself. So it's like, once I'm up and I'm there, it's totally fine. But it's the thought of, it's just the, the night before thought of, God, I got to get up in early in the morning. What does this world come to? But then we wake up, it's like, oh, yeah, this is fine. It's actually pretty good to be up in the morning because then I feel like I can get things done. I don't waste half my day sleeping. But I never learn. It's those first like it's those first like 10 minutes that you wake up in the morning that it's like, this is literal, this is literal hell on earth. This is the worst thing in the world. But but then you get up and you take a shower and you're like, oh, all right. It's maybe it's not hell on earth. It's probably purgatory, but it's not quite. We're, we haven't gotten there yet. We're we're still in one of the we're still in one of the seven is it seven layers of hell. Something like that, you know? Yeah, there we go. Shield Mastery. We got a new character. Sweet. So that's going to open up some new quests for us. And likely going to be the next thing I need to play in order to probably unlock another character. Or maybe a part of our... I'm not sure how many more things I need to unlock in the hub. I might be, I might be done. I might have everything I need in the hub. But I don't know. I've seen, like, obviously I've been getting a lot more uh, Halls of Torment gameplay in my recommended. Um, and I've, I've noticed people saying that they, I don't know what it is. I have avoided watching the videos because I, I want to, you know, experience it for the first time myself. But I've seen a lot of people saying that they're clearing the vault. I have no idea what that is. So I, 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 and, uh, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to have to get there and figure it out. But I'm assuming that's going to be something that I need to unlock. So there's clearly still stuff that I still need to unlock. Dragon's Beth Breath could be fairly okay. Sure. Let's go for... Let's increase the damage on the needles. I think those are the... I was, gonna th I was thinking about putting it on the orbs, but I think that the needles are just going to be a little bit more consistent. Okay, what item are we getting here? Oh man, there's. I must have unlocked something because I'm getting all new stuff now. Goo puddles when moving, applies slow to up to 10 enemies, leaves a patch of fire every 3 meters walk, deals 50 damage, has a 10% chance to inflict burn. Hitting burning enemies with physical attacks has 10% chance of shooting damaging sparks. Sure. Oh, something else that I. Okay, so let me pause here for a second. Something else I noticed that I'm not sure I have figured out like the in-game reason, and maybe maybe some of you guys can can shine some light on it for me. So the well. I've noticed that on some of the levels, especially like the first two maps, when you go to the well, you can only bring one thing up, and I think it's this map. Yeah, it has to be this map, because I've only we only did the one pitiful run on the, the fourth map, the frozen map. So I obviously didn't do the well there. In this map, I think you can put up multiple items in the well. Now, I know you can't go back. So like once you go in and you leave the menu, you can't send anything up. But even on like when I did the Ember map, 
I did one item and then the UI just closed automatically on me. In this map, I'm gonna have to double check when we go back because I think I could put multiple items up. If there's a re I'm assuming there is a reason for that, but hopefully someone can shine some light on that because I don't know the a I don't know the answer to that. Okay, again, I'm not taking the burn damage. Let's just take the crit chance. Uh, ooh, attack speed. Attack speed's pretty good. Yeah, we definitely want to be applying these debuffs more. And at this point, it's too late, but I, pr I probably should have picked another quest to track. But if I'm going to be completely honest, I don't even know... Well, I guess all the quests that I've been tracked... Well... Never mind. I'm, I'm not even going to finish that thought because I'm, I already know that it, it was wrong. Base on crit. Ch oh, got it. Got it. Um, Let's go for f attack speed. Especially for something that's kind of single target. Just increase that attack speed. Is there another tier? There is. So what else would I want for tier four? Attack speed, probably. Yeah, so I'm going to pass up on this. Let's just take area. Or actually, let's take crit bonus. Attack speed stands out. Damage and crit bonus, that actually stands out a little bit more. Especially with the minus area. It's like, it's funny. You look at minus area and you're like, oh, that doesn't seem as good. But if it shrinks the, the diameter of the circle, I think it's actually really good. Right? Because then if you increase if you decrease the size of the diameter of this of this circle, then you're basically condensing the space between the orbs. And in doing that, it makes it more likely that you can hit the same enemy multiple times with orbs. Let's just go base regeneration. Oh, wait, maybe is the arrow things we're getting upon level up, maybe? That's something I hadn't thought about. Maybe that's what it is. I want attack speed here, so let's just go let's just go block strength. Oh, I didn't know I needed to do that. Okay, perfect. We got a quest done anyway for that. Those are the best quests that you do when you don't jump into a map because you know you have one specific quest you need to do. You just happen to get it along the way. Multi-strike area radius seems pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that over the damage. Just hit more enemies. Yeah, you know, th this seems uh, this seems a little bit more uh a little bit easier than the the frozen map that we're on before where the enemies were very fast. At least now we know that I do I do actually need to point put points into my movement speed. You think I would have done that before, but my my thought there was that I don't really want to take level ups in defensive stats, so I was going to pump up defensive stats first. Uh, let's just get this roll duration, just kind of level up the golem here, so that way we can work him up. And then after I got a few defensive, then I started working on, on offensive stats because my damage didn't seem great. And now my move speed's not good, so we're just kind of we're kind of pivoting. We're just kind of moving up the ladder, you know. Which is something that you know I experienced in in one of the games that I I played today, which is actually a uh, we're revisiting a game called Heroes Warband. Again, I don't know if that video is already out or is I mean if it's not already, it's either not out or coming out. One of the two. <laughs> That's the only options it could possibly be. But uh, in that game, 
based on my experience between when I played in the demo and now, I think that the game, I, I, I don't know for certain because there's not a lot of updates on the Steam page as far as, you know, what's been updated from demo to, to full release. Let's go for, let's see, damage increases for remaining pierce count multiplied by damage and crit bonus. Both are copies of the original with its remaining hit count increases base damage by 15. Um, what's our what's our crit chance on that? Uh, no, this one. Crit chance. Oh, we have a pretty decent crit chance. Hold up. Yeah, let's take the Phantom Split. But based on what I saw, like in that game, for example, it I think it's become much more meta progression dependent. Like, so meta progression is a thing that I've kind of been obviously focusing on a little bit more. Um, now that I've been playing like a lot more bullet heavens, auto battlers, you know, all that kind of stuff, inventory managers, and so on. And meta progression has really kind of become a, a staple in these genres. Or, I mean, obviously it, it, it has been for, for a while, but for my gaming career, it's, it's definitely become more of a staple system that I haven't been used to in the past couple of years. So I guess that's more along the lines of what I mean. Let's go for movement speed here. Um, but I think what it does differently, because a lot of the other games that I, I used, like, my gaming history definitely is not full of roguelikes, basically, and it's a lot, it's a lot of single player games, and the thing with single player games, you know, that don't, that specifically don't, ha obviously there are level up systems, but there's not, like, meta progression per se, is that you know that the game is here's a be, here's a better way to to set this up is that if you're playing a campaign if you're playing a single player game for example the last one that I played before starting this channel was uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla right which is kind of your uh, kind of a God of War a new God of War like kind of clone mixed with Assassin well it is Assassin's Creed duh. I was going to say with like the Ubisoft, uh, you know, formula with towers and a bunch of different collectibles to get that kind of stuff, right? In a single player game, you know that you're going to be following the story. As you follow the story, you're going to get better gear. Like, you know that the game is going to be balanced around getting more gear progressively. And they're not just going to throw you into something tough right off the bat. Whereas with, with meta progression, what it does is it kind of leaves... Or at least me. I mean, players in general, I suppose. But me more specifically in this case. Not entirely sure how difficult the game is going to be balanced, right? Because with meta progression, what you can do is you can crank up the difficulty. And let's say just, you know, if for in layman's terms, right? We're going to talk about difficulty in terms of easy to very hard, right? Like easy, medium, hard, very hard, right? Obviously, these are going to be ambiguous terms. But you could, for example... If you have a, a roguelike that has five maps, you could balance it so the first map starts at easy, and then the last one you go all the way up to like very hard or nightmare difficulty, right? Each one just kind of steps up in terms of difficulty. What you could also do is you could start your map one at like very hard difficulty. Map two goes to ultimate. Map three goes to freaking terrifying. <laughs> map four is the devil. And map five is your mom after you you don't text her immediately after she texts you. So, right, so the, the difficulty scaling between maps is the same. The difference is that you're starting from a much more difficult space because the whole goal the developer wants you to do is, you know, you play for like three minutes, then you die. You play for five minutes, then you die. Then you put in some meta progression. Now you can make it to eight minutes. Well, then you die. Put in more progression. Ooh, now you're at ten minutes. And then, like, you keep building like that, right? versus you start with you start on very easy you beat it the first time you get to easy well now you got to 18 minutes you put a little minute of progression in boom you beat it now you go to map three it's on medium you make it to 15 minutes you do that twice at 15 minutes put in some meta aggression boom you beat it right now you're already like three-fifths through the map so the, it's it's one of those things where when i play these games i i question myself because it's like is the game hard or am i bad 
because I, I am no professional gamer. I play these things for fun, and I talk about them because I have a, a bit of a creative background. I understand the process of what it goes, what goes into creating something, what goes into user experience. You know, I have some experience with that kind of stuff. And for that, I don't think that you necessarily have to be one of the best players in the world and i think in general just as with anything where you're reviewing everybody's tastes are going to be different every everybody is going to bring a different idea of what is a positive and negative experience just as you know somebody who for example if my youngest brother hates cheese i know it's awful i'm planning i'm working on trying to disown him it's it's the worst thing in the world i'm kidding <laughs> but he doesn't like cheese so if we were so if me and him and i love cheese by the way in case you were wondering so if we were going to start a pizza review company i can guarantee you that why am i walking this way i can guarantee you that his scores are overall going to be much lower on average than mine because for him when we go and get pizza, he removes all the cheese off his pizza like a crazy person. <laughs> Whereas I would scarf down an entire pizza and say, hey, would you would you put more cheese on that for me, please? And so because of that, everyone, you know, everyone's opinion and overall what they look for in games is gonna be is gonna be very different. I forgot why I was necessarily on that. Oh, right. So my whole point in what I was talking about is that I don't think that, you know, in order to review games or critique games in any way, you have to be like this professional player who's the best there ever was and can clear the game first time uh, when using main weapon. Oh, when not. I haven't, I'm going to be honest. I have not understood what this does. So if someone can explain the spellcaster gloves to me, that would be awesome. I don't understand the when not use. Oh, because you can just turn off auto attack. Duh. Okay. Well, then I'm going to take it and probably send it up. Yeah, I forgot you could turn off the auto attack. Uh, I, you know, I think everybody's opinion is valid. I think as long as you play the games, like if you play games, I guess even if you don't play games, but I think in that case, someone's opinion might be slightly less valid, right? If it's the first time they've ever picked up a video game, I'm probably not going to take their review as seriously as somebody who not even plays a lot of games, just plays a reasonable amount and has kind of an understanding of what's, of for the most part, of what's going on, right? But everybody's opinions are valid. That's why, you know, companies play test. They do focus groups and they have uh, a, or they should have a large range of people testing their products where you have people who, um, for example, like if you're doing movies, right? If you're doing if you're doing the next Marvel movie, you want the full gamut. You want the person who is walking into a Marvel movie for the very first time, and you want the person who's read every single comic book that's ever come out for that character, right? You want that whole swath to see, okay, what like, wh where are we at among the spectrum of pleasing both crowds of people? Because the likelihood in that in that context, the likelihood that most of our money is going to come from the people who have probably not never seen a Marvel movie, but just watches them casually, is far higher than the people who have read every single comic book because there is just a larger number of them. It There is just a lot more people in the world that have probably never read a comic book, but just like to casually go see a good uh, like hero uh, superhero action movie. And so you got to please those people. But at the same time, you also don't want to piss off, uh, you know, the super fans. Okay, let's go electrified orbs here. And let's go multi-strike. And that applies to a number of things, gaming included. Um, you know, looking at the looking at the gaming news as of recently, you know, I think we all kind of know what we're talking about here. Movies too, movies and shows. Uh, let's get that affliction going. You know, you don't want to alienate that super hardcore fan base, but at the same time, you also can't, you know, I, so for example, I think that, uh, no, I'm not going to talk any spoilers here just in case people haven't seen it, but I think Deadpool and Wolverine is a perfect example of how you can do both, both catering to the hardcore fans and making a movie that is very popular for 
casual audience, right? It's I think it's currently the highest grossing R-rated movie. It's made over a billion dollars. There's only a handful of movies that have ever made more than a billion dollars. And it's extremely rare. I think the only other R-rated movie that's done it is Joker to make over a billion dollars. And and be R-rated, more specifically, right? Because that obviously, obviously, if it's R-rated, you need to have age verification to go in, or I guess maybe not age verification, but you got to be, you know, over 17 or 18 to get in, right? You can't be a kid and getting in, and so it's it's much easier. It basically it limits the amount of people who can easily walk into the movie, and if you make things harder, people are more likely to just say, nah, not doing it. So that is a real testament to, you know, how I think it's a real testament in that movie specifically, just because of the way that they do certain, I'll say there's certain jokes and certain characters that are done in a way that both the casual fan can really enjoy but also the people who have a deeper understanding of what's going on with some of these characters can have a a more deep and um, a more deep connection, but also have a deeper understanding of what it means to be in this movie. And I think that a lot of while there are going to be some jokes that go over some of the more casual people's heads, just because they're kind of. Of course, it's a Deadpool movie, right? So if you've seen Deadpool 1 and 2, you know there are going to be some deep cuts, right? So a, f a good example from the first Deadpool movie is like when Deadpool goes, oh, McAvoy or Stewart? Someone who hasn't seen all the X-Men movies is going to be like, what does that even mean? But if you've seen all of them, it's like, oh, that's funny because, you know, um, uh, McAvoy played young uh, Professor X and Patrick Stewart played the old one. So he's just playing on the fact that there's two different actors, right? So there's things that are that are, and that's one that probably goes over some people's head, and it's not that funny. But the you know the rest of the jokes, the more slapstick jokes, obviously hit hit that crowd a little bit easier. And same same thing is done in Deadpool and Wolverine, where there's certain things where if you know what's happening, it's like, oh yeah, that's that's really good. That's a good play on what's going on. And so they did they did what they needed to do man they they pleased the the hardcore fans and they they pleased the casual fans and I think that is that is a difficult balance to hit oh hey is this our first magnet maybe not there's not we're not getting a whole lot of experience, I suppose. Let's increase that effect on hit chance. Okay, so I think at this point, let's go ahead. Now, is it possible that I'm gonna get an extra item and feel bad about this? Perhaps. So if I send this up. Huh. Cause I can guarantee you that I put up two items before. Maybe there was an item that I picked up or something. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was. So the time that I did this where I sent up multiple, I had a I had one of the bottles, because this is the map where you get that the potion guy, and he had a bottle that you had to pick up. Maybe maybe it was a special exception because the bottle was the first thing I sent up. So maybe because it's like a quest item, then you get two items. That could be. That could be what was going on. Okay. That's that said, I, I did set up the, the item that I guarantee that I wanted. The other two are, you know, I think that one's the most unique that we could kind of build, uh, you know, have a build around. Attack speed, move speed, effect chance, crit bonus, base defense. Let's take the clay golem acceleration.
And I do like the attack speed. I obviously like it on Transfiction too. What's doing more damage though? Phantom needles at four million. Okay, we're we're doing <laughs> we're doing phantom needles. Just doing way more damage. I suppose Transfiction is there more for applying debuffs than it is for the flat damage though. I guess that's fair. So the needles, uh, the needles. Let's say this: the needles owe Transfiction for where it got. take some crit chance. Deal one and a half million damage with Astronomer's Orbs. Alright, that's that's a good quest to get done. I think that means that now I have to do the quest where I get three million damage, and I'm nowhere close to that. Roll duration. Yeah, let's take that. Yeah, and the more I look at it, I think the arrows on the skill up might be indicating what I get, what my character gets as I level up. So I'm assuming one arrow is like, you get a you get a bit of it, two arrows is like, hey, you get a lot upon level up, maybe you want to rethink buying this. I don't know what diagonal is. Maybe that's, well, I guess, yeah, I don't know what, what diagonal is though. Oh, I also haven't figured out what the books are for. Right, we, we see all these books, like there's the one by the well. I don't know what those are for. I read them, but then they like don't do anything. Maybe I'm just supposed to read a bunch of them and something happens. All right, come on, bucko, let's go. Let's get some big damage on ya. Yeah, just keep you in that orb range. Let's go. Come on. Come on. I don't think you have any chance of killing me, man. I haven't even used my revive yet. We are good. We are solid. And down he goes. There we go. We pick up the shard. Uh, what are... Forgetting what the shards are used for, though. I gotta remember. Because in, in another game we, we just played, uh, or I just played today, that had, had shards basically the same thing. And I remember what those were used for. I don't remember what the shards are used for in this game. Again, that's the downside of playing all these different games at once. <laughs> Maybe I just haven't unlocked the How need for them, perhaps. I, I You can be of service by showing me more plants, be man. We, we, we didn't see any plants. Alright, so what do we got over here, old man? How much are you going to charge me for these things? What? God, you're a ripoff, man. Godspeed. Godspeed. Get out of here. Alright, let's get it moving. Jesus Christ. Okay, that's that's very expensive. Can we can we put something else in here? What can I take out? Pick yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me give me oh my god. Hold up. That's that's not enough. I need something that's real expensive. What's real expensive? Damage. There we go. God dang man, nine nine K gold? Jesus. What is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. credits. All right, so there we go. There is the shield maiden. Uh, we're gonna have to do what else do we have for quests here? I mean, we got a bunch of quests, right? I got some of the frozen depths, which we could probably do with, uh, now that we've done the shield maiden. Probably don't have to play. We could probably play, you know, someone else. Who could we play? Maybe the, like the warlock or the the what is a sorceress? Yeah, sorceress. Somebody who's faster. I think if we can get someone who's faster, that might be a benefit. Honestly, the sorceress probably because I think she's the fastest character I have. Oh, the archer too. But she's probably yeah, she's flimsy as crap all right well we got some work to do guys uh thank you so much for watching this episode we oh wait wait, wait. didn't i wait hold up hold up 
I'm fe Hold on just a second. Steady shield. Where where is that th This was supposed to unlock a new character. Uh acquire the trick channeling fire. Yeah, but in doing this, I thought this was supposed to unlock the new Am I am I wrong? Am I wrong? I thought that was supposed to unlock the uh the Lanc Lanc Lancashire -sh 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 Fencing Gauntlets, Skull, Trait, Maiden's Tear. Now is it is it location based? Is that what I was looking up? Unlocks Norseman, Chamber. Is it in here? Where's the Lancashire -sh 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 -sh? Concentrated, five thousand arcane. No, it's not there. Where did I see it? Where the frick? Where the frick, man? Duh, duh, duh. No, 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 no. Is it in here? I don't think so. I think this is just like gold stuff. Seal. What's this? Meteor strike. It's not that. Bulwark. No. Maintenance tier. Time market. Shit. No, no. Something in here. No. I know I saw it. Where's the Lancashire? Mark. Mark, no, 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 no. I know I saw it. I'm not a crazy person. It's not true. Maybe I am. I think I've gone full circle. So I think I am just a crazy person. I could have sworn that this accomplished these quests to unlock new rewards and earn gold. I thought that was for the Lancashire Nationer, but okay. Maybe I'm just completely out of my mind. Anyway, now that you guys have seen how crazy I am, although you probably already knew that, uh, thank you for sticking around for this episode of Halls of Torment. Really having fun. I'm, you know, I'm having more fun than I than I thought I was going to. To be completely honest, I think I said like in the first first episode is that, you know, I, I've kind of put on put off playing this game for a little while because of, on first impressions, I was looking at it kind of like how you would look at something like a PS1 game versus a PS2 game, which. You know, maybe this isn't the best comparison, but I, I've I've kind of already compared these two a lot, and because for me the way from because originally right I was kind of outside this genre, and the way that I saw the progression of the genre for me as as a whole kind of felt like it started with Vampire Survivors. Halls of Torment was like the next big kind of evolution of the genre. And then after that was Death Must Die. Now, obviously, that's a gross simplification and probably not even at all like exactly what happened. But to me, those kind of feel like big pillars of the genre. Like Vampire Survivors clearly brought this genre to the forefront. Obviously, there are games that did it before then. But at least from my perspective, that was like the first one that exploded in popularity. And... Uh, kind of like, for example, how H1Z1, PUBG, yeah, we had these battle royales before, but Fortnite took it and was like, poof. Although that's not completely fair. I think in that case, Fortnite is probably more of the death must die. But anyway, so my understanding of the game, like, I thought that death must die was kind of the more refined, more more up my alley and while i do still think it's slightly more up my alley and will probably i'm i'm working a way to fit that into the channel here in the future because i really want to do a death must die playthrough i've i've re tried recording a series twice now because i want to start from the beginning i don't want to just start like in the middle of my experience um and it, by now it's been a couple months i just jumped in the other day for like you know, two or three minutes to see if I remember everything. And there's a lot of stuff that I'd, I'd prefer to just start from the beginning rather than jumping in midway and having to like piece it, piece together all these different builds, my skill trees, my my uh, equipment, and like put all this stuff together. I'd rather just have like the solid foundation and then put things on top as opposed to starting at the top of the period and have pyramid and have to work my way back down, if that makes sense. So in my mind, I was thinking, oh, well, I've already played Death Must Die and I really like it. So the odds are that I'm going to jump into Halls of Torment and it's going to feel like a, a little bit more watered down version. And I don't think that's the case. I think there are some systems that I think are a little bit more improved in Death Must Die. But I think where Halls of Torment definitely has uh, a place to stand on its own. And I think once I get more towards the end game and maybe towards like these vault things that people are talking about, you know, maybe I'll, I'll definitely start to see more of a difference. 
Um, but for now, I'm I'm having a good time, and I'm glad that I at least took the leap in and, and started playing it. But guys, thank you so much for watching. You know, I obviously had a lot of questions here to ask you guys. But, you know, if you have any comments, if you have any builds that you'd like me to do or just anything in general, you know, you want to let me know your what what is your favorite pizza? That's a good question. What are your favorite pizza toppings um, and pineapple? Pineapple is a good topping on pizza. I'll say it. I'll start the controversy. Let's go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, would you kindly smash the like button? Subscribe to the channel for more roguelike action. But that's going to do it for me today. I have been Ganyans. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.